All right, guys, welcome back to another episode of Black Hat Python. In this one, we will be creating that male sniffer. Now, in the last video, we did a very basic, uh, bare bones version of this. We we're just uh, basically writing a basic sniffer that uh, didn't really do much. Now, we're actually going to be sniffing for email accounts, so username and password. Uh, using Scappy once again. Uh, that's pretty much what we're going to be using throughout the rest of this section here of the book is we're just going to be using Scappy to create some really cool, useful stuff with relatively few lines of code, especially if you compare that to uh, like the decoder that we wrote previously. So check out those videos if you haven't already. Now for this program here, We'll just start with uh, the main function. So we're going to be using sniff, which is something that is built into Scappy. That's why we imported sniff, TCP, and IP. Those are the three uh, methods that we're going to need from uh, scappy.all. So yeah, I'm not sure why it's showing red here. The script was working properly, but uh, yeah, that's kind of interesting there. Uh, but when we ran sniff here, Inside, we're going to pass it a filter. Now, if you remember from before, there's a number of uh, filter keywords that we can apply, right? We can say, hey, we only want to sniff on this host or this interface or this port. Uh, or we're only interested in the source that's equal to, you know, this IP address or destination equal to a certain IP address or even just... Uh, we just want IP, IPv4 or just IPv6, just TCP, just UDP. Any of that stuff is valid. If you ever use Wireshark before or TCP dump, uh, this is the same thing as um, the BPF filter. So it's written in that same syntax for if you ever applied a filtering rule to say Wireshark or TCP dump. So with that in mind, we can just type in our BPF filter here. In the case of this one, we want to sniff mail, right? So that is why we will be filtering on TCP port 110, port 25, and port 143. And the, that's the way you can specify multiple uh, different ports, uh, TCP ports in this case, uh, to filter for. We just separate that with the or keyword here. That's why we see or or. Now... Next thing that we want to say is that, hey, when you find these, when you sniff and you filter, you find these things, these conditions are met, then run our callback function, which I will be uh, jumping to here in a second. Now, an additional thing we add is this store zero here, because basically this is going to essentially be acting as like a while loop here. It's going to continuously sniff for these packets until we terminate it, as you'll see when we when we demo it. Now, what the store equals zero means uh, in Scappy is that we don't want to actually store, in, store any of the information found. We're just going to print it to the console. And the reason for that is if we run this in the background for a long time, if we were to store this information, then we could quickly fill up the RAM and it would just be holding on to all this information, could slow down the system potentially if you're running it for a really long time. So that's why we have that there. Now for the actual packet callback function that gets ran when it filters and finds this stuff, right? Uh, basically it's gonna take in, as we saw last time, one parameter that we will call packet, and it will be looking at it to see if it contains data. That's basically what this is. So if there's any data, in the packet that it finds, what it will do is just set that the data in a string format to uh, this my packet variable. And then from there, if the data in that packet contains the string user or if it contains the string pass um, after we we lowercase it, right? Because maybe user is ca the U and user is capitalized or the P and pass might be capitalized, or maybe it's all caps, right? So we're gonna make sure we get it in a unified format by calling the built-in Python lower uh, method here, which we put in lowercase, and then we'll check against it for these strings respectively here. And if that is found, then we will print destination and we'll say, hey, it's from this IP address, right? Or it's, it's being sent to this IP address here, because we wanna know where is the mail server located that they're trying to log into. So it will tell us that, and then it will actually show us the uh, the data from that uh, that TCP packet. So we'll be able to see the uh, user and or password 
which is exactly what we want with this male sniffer. So that's pretty much all the code. Um, and of course, we see this all the time here, so I won't even cover that in this video. And uh, let's just go ahead and run it. So if we run it as root, Python 3 sn uh, male sniffer, male underscore sniffer dot pi. Now, for me, here's the, here's the only caveat. I don't have any male stuff set up on this network. I, what you would do is basically you would run this, right? You would start your male sniffer, and then when someone logs into a male server while this is running, it should be able to grab that packet and show us the username and or password and what destination it's going to, right? Pretty simple. So the use case for this is if you are on a network where... You know, you're already on their internal network and you want to compromise some mail server accounts, then you could do that by sniffing the network for it. And then when someone happens to log in, it should be able to grab that information for you. Now, I want to still be able to demo to you guys what like a valid output would look like. So I snipped this from the uh, from the book here. Uh, I guess I can't make this any bigger, really, but. It will look something like this. So you run it, and then after a time when someone logs in, it will say, hey, they logged in. Oops. They logged in, and uh, this is the destination right here, the destination IP address. And then this was the user, right? And this is the pass here, right? So that that's pretty much what the output would look like in the event that uh, it actually captured some login. So, you know, maybe in the future I'll set up like an actual lab for this, but uh, this was the only one involving mail sniffing because right after this, we're going to be moving on to ARP cache poisoning, which is something that we could easily uh, demo on our network without having to set up too much stuff. Um, so I didn't really feel that it was too necessary to go through the hassle of setting up a mail server and mail clients and all that. Uh, for this particular video here, but yeah, maybe something I'll do in the future But yeah, the next one's gonna be really interesting doing the ARP cache poisoning This is an attack that I've done with already pre-built tools So it'll be cool to see how we can do this uh, with Python scappy So yeah, definitely stay tuned for that if you want to catch up on the videos go ahead and check out the playlist uh, On screen now black hat python. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching